Let's try to solve this example problem for calculating the enthalpy during the vaporization of liquid nitrogen. So liquid nitrogen is going to vaporize at negative 198, negative 195.8 Celsius at one atmosphere of pressure. So during this process, the system is going to absorb 5.56 kilojoules per mole of heat, the system being the nitrogen, the liquid. And the density of liquid nitrogen at this temperature is going to be 0 0.808 grams per milliliter. So our question is, what is the change in internal energy during this process? So we're going to use the, the concept of enthalpy to help us figure this out. Okay, so first of all, we're going to need our definition of enthalpy here. So enthalpy which if I just put a bar over it means molar enthalpy or enthalpy per mole is going to be internal energy plus pressure times molar volume. So H equals U plus PV or H bar equals U bar plus PV bar. And during some process, the change in enthalpy is going to be given by delta H equals delta U plus, and then we have product rule here, P delta V bar plus V bar delta P. But remember, at, if it's just open to the atmosphere at a pressure of one atmosphere, then that is going to be constant pressure during that process. So this term, as, as usual, goes to zero. So our delta H, as it is for constant pressure processes, is just delta U plus P delta V. Okay, so what we need to calculate is what delta H is and what delta V is, and then we'll be able to figure out what delta U is. Okay, so for our delta H, we know that that is equal to the heat of the system or the heat of the process during uh, whatever change this is at constant pressure. So this is a constant pressure process and the system absorbed 5.56 kilojoules per mole of heat. So the enthalpy is going to be plus 5.56 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's part simple enough. So delta V bar, change in the molar volume, change in how much, uh, how much volume one mole of the substance occupies. Well, we're vaporizing, so we're going from a liquid to a gas, so could be quite a lot of difference in the volume that a gas occupies versus a liquid, because gas particles are very spread out, and in liquid they're fairly condensed. So our delta V bar is going to be the final minus the initial molar volume, so molar volume of the gas minus molar volume of the liquid. So now what we have left to calculate is the molar volume of the gas and of the liquid. So let's first look at the gas. So we know for a gas PV equals NRT or alternatively PV bar equals RT. So therefore V bar equals RT over P. So now it's just a matter of making sure we have all the correct units here. So for temperature, we're pretty much always going to want this temperature to be Kelvin. And here we've got it in Celsius. So let's convert that temperature. So minus 195.8 degrees C equals minus 195.8 plus Celsius to Kelvin is plus 273.15 Kelvin. And then we do that addition, take the correct number of significant figures and that is going to be 77.4 Kelvin is our temperature. Gas constant, we know that. Pressure, we know that. Okay, so, but is the pressure in an appropriate unit? Well, it's in atmospheres, and we're going to want this molar volume in terms of liters per mole if we're going to use a gas constant that has, uh, that has uh, liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Or we could use a gas constant that is joules per mole Kelvin, and then we have to get this pressure in terms of something that looks like joules per liter. Okay, so let's convert this pressure to the appropriate unit. 
So we have one atmosphere. We know that one atmosphere is 101,325 pascals, which is a Newton per meter squared, or a Newton meter per meter cubed, and a Newton meter can alternatively be called a joule. So let me go ahead and label that as a joule. So that's a joule per meter cubed. I'm going to put that down on the bottom so we can better convert. Joule per meter cubed. Okay, so we got a joule per meter cubed. So I want to convert this meters cubed into liters, so I will have joules per liter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So for a meter cubed here, if I have one meter cubed, that's equal to 10 cubed decimeters cubed, which are equivalent to a liter. One liter is one decimeter cubed. So that's my conversion factor there. That's divide by 10 to the 3, so just move three decimal places. So I get 101.325 joules per liter. Okay, so I think that's in our decent unit. So let's calculate our molar volume of our gas. V bar G is going to be, okay, let's have 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin for gas constant R times our temperature, 77.4 Kelvin, divided by, we have our pressure in units of joules per liter, 101. 0.325 joules per liter. Okay, so is this going to give us the type of unit we want? Let's see. So Kelvin and Kelvin cancel out there. Um, the joules and the joules are going to go away. So we're going to get this per liter is going to go up top. This per mole is going to go down bottom. So we're going to get liters per mole. And if you stick this into a calculator, what you are going to get is that this will equal 6.35 liters per mole. So that is the molar volume of our gas, V bar G. So that's our first big result there. Now we need to do the same thing for the liquid, hopefully a little bit more straightforward for the liquid. So V bar for the liquid, well, what do we have? We have the density for the liquid. So let's say that's 0 0.808 grams per milliliter. Again, I want to write that in a way that can be easily manipulated through a unit conversion. Okay, so we don't want grams. We definitely want moles. So let's go from grams to moles. So that's N2. So that's more, the molar mass of that is twice the uh, atomic mass of nitrogen for a mole. So that is going to be 14.02 grams per one mole of N2. All right, so that's converted out. And then for this milliliters, we want this to be liters. So we have 1,000 milliliters or 10 to the third milliliters. It's going to be one liter. And then if we cancel out these units, we have grams goes away milliliters goes away. We're left with mole per liter. We want liter per mole. So in the end, we're going to take the inverse of this whole thing as well once we calculate that. So our result there is going to be that the molar volume of the liquid is going to end up being, let me see where I have this written down, it's going to be 1.74 times 10 to the minus 2 liters per mole. So you can see several orders of magnitude more compact than the gas, two orders of magnitude more compact, as we expect a liquid to be. Okay, so delta V bar, change in our molar volume, is just going to be molar volume of the gas minus molar volume of the liquid, 6.35 minus 1.74 times 10 to the minus 2 liters per mole is going to equal, well, this is just going to have a very minor perturbation on the molar volume of the gas. It's going to end up giving you 6.33 
liters per mole. So the change in the volume is almost entirely equal to the volume of the gas. The volume of the liquid is almost negligible relative to the molar volume of the gas. Gases are far, far more diffuse at uh, typical atmospheric conditions than liquids and solids are. Okay, so we have that. So let's go ahead and rearrange this equation up here. So to get delta U, or delta U bar, the change in the molar energy, we just need to take this P delta V term and move it to the other side. So we'll have delta H bar minus P delta V bar. So we have delta U bar equals 5.56 kilojoules per mole for the enthalpy, the constant pressure heat, minus the pressure in appropriate units, going to say joules per liter. Well, we want kilojoules per liter, so I'm going to have to again convert three decimal places over to get it into kilojoules as we have here. So that's going to be 0 0.101325 kilojoules per liter. And then the change in molar volume was 6.33 liters per mole. So for our units, we see that liters and liters cancels. So we get kilojoules per mole here, kilojoules per mole there. That's good. We can subtract those two because they have the same unit. And delta U bar, our change in our internal energy here, when we plug this into our calculator, is going to end up being 5.56 kilojoules per mole minus this term here, which comes out to be 0 0.64 kilojoules per mole. So the final result, which we get to proudly box over, is going to be 4.92 kilojoules per mole. So let's look at these two terms here. We have this 5.56 kilojoules per mole. That was our enthalpy. So this term here was all of the heat which was added to the system. It was energy was input to the system as heat. And then this 0 0.64 kilojoules per mole, that was the pressure times the change in volume, constant pressure. So that was equal to the work. So in order to become a gas, in order to take up this new larger amount of volume, the system had to push against the atmosphere and do work on the surroundings in order to exist as a gas. So of that energy that was added in as heat, we lost 0.64 of it because we had to do the work in order to be uh, permitted by the atmosphere uh, to exist in a gaseous state, and that was the work that we did. So our change in energy was the sum of the heat and the work and our first law is obeyed there, giving us 4.92 kilojoules per mole change of the molar internal energy. And we notice this work here had to be done in the system, and this is something which appears more generally uh, in kind of empirical laws. You'll see if you assume something to be an ideal gas, the enthalpy change for a process is generally assumed to be the change in the internal energy plus uh, gas constant times temperature times the change in the number of moles of gas. So if you have a large number of uh, mole, moles of gas being created, your enthalpy is going to be uh, far larger. And if you have moles of gas going from gas to some other state, then your enthalpy is going to go far farther down.